Welcome to Sports Connection. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. Happy to have in studio once again my partner, Tate Matthews. Tate, a lot to talk about. Uh, we have a sport in the books. We have some individuals and a team, Franklin Boys Bowling, who make it all the way to the state tournament. So, successful season for WCS in bowling. Yes, and it's just a matter of time. We'll, we'll have a, a banner, a championship banner in bowling very soon. So I've, let me do a, let's see if this is a good comparison. I'm comparing maybe where Franklin's at, bowling, with uh, maybe where Summit's at in wrestling, knocking on the door. Summit's been to the ultimate and gotten in the top three or four uh, more times than Franklin. But you can feel it, it's a matter of time before Coach Miller joins Coach Bubba Derrick with a state championship uh, in wrestling. I, it feels the same to me. Team state championship. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, uh, the Franklin bowling, it seems like it's been uh, – th th this this summit thing's been building for a while. But right. Yes, they're right on the doorstep. They're knock, knock, knocking on heaven's <laughs> door. Uh, Franklin is too in bowling, but it was just it's, – it's, it's quicker. But, yeah, I think you're right. So let's talk about Franklin. And by the way, this week's gym, the Franklin boys with their first state tournament trip as a team. And what I like is how they got there. They defeat Creekwood in the region. That's been a pretty good program. And then they win 19 to four over Green Hill in the sectional slash substate to qualify for the state tournament. So now they're in the mix. They draw Dobbins Bennett. Dobbins Bennett comes in at 17 and 0, but you never know. Right. They've been a, do they even have bowling alleys in part of East Upper East Tennessee? Well, apparently they've got one where Dobbins Bennett's at. <laughs> no, I know, yeah, but when you get over into Adams, uh, you know, Cop County. And... Listen, that may be some of the best bowlers at Hey, well, let me say this. Okay, and I, this is off. But no, no, let me say this. Dobbins Bennett, no disrespect, but it's just true. They have made a living. They they the only way they'll play Maryville is if they're region game, if, if if they're mandated to. Those guys, so if their bowling program's anything like their football program, then yeah, 17 and 0 don't really mean a whole lot to me because because for years in football, they'll go 10 and 0, 10 and 0, beating up on William Blunt and all them those guys <laughs> boat racing them and running clocking them. And then they get to the playoffs and it's one and done, baby, because they've played nobody. So that feels clown show esque. Oh, oh, big time! <laughs> oh, Ten and oh, four years in regular season in a row. Oh, that's awesome! What'd y'all do in the playoffs? Well, we hadn't made it out of the first round. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, let's give them their due. And Forget, forgive us if we don't. <laughs> let's give them their due in bowling here. Quaking our boots. It's so seventeen and oh in bowling. Twelve eleven. Okay. Dobbins Bennett defeats Franklin. It was they were right there. Franklin was. And I'm going to tell you how that. Uh, that ended up shaking out. Uh, Dobbins Bennett gets all the way to the final. They beat the host, basically, Smyrna. It's at Smyrna, Smyrna Bowling Alley. They beat them, and then in the final, they lose to Hardin County. Who won the boys and the girls? Give the devil his due. They're, yeah. they're pretty good. We coming, though. <laughs> we come. <laughs> I love it. I, you love primetime at the Colorado Bowl. Well, I don't know if I would go that far, but I certainly love. We come. <laughs> I definitely love that. So get this. So, again, to remind our viewers out there uh, and to make sure that uh, Coach Brees is up on this as well, there are six 10-pin uh, uh, matches. That's mano a mano. I'm one, you're one, two versus two. So six matches. Franklin loses five of the six. So they're down 5-1, and then they count up total pins. Dobbins Bennett, they won five matches. Obviously, they win the two additional points. It's 7-1. Going to the Baker games. Now, the Baker games, to remind our viewers, there's five of us that are on the team. If I'm one, I both bring frame one and six. Another teammate bowls two and seven. That's got to be exciting. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Three, eight, four, nine, five, ten. So Franklin drops the first Baker by about 30 pence. So now they're down nine, one. So they've got to pull off basically this miracle, and they darn near do. They win. Uh, the comeback's on. Baker number two, 
Baker number three. This is where you, the momentum's really shifting. 199, 138. Baker four, 186 to 154. Baker five, a little bit too close, 194, 186. So now it's 9 9. They add up the pins for the Baker matches. Franklin wins the total pins. They're up 11 9. But the final three points is total pins. Dobbins, yeah. Bennett, Dobbins Bennett was up 184 pins after the uh, the American 10 pin games. <laughs> you love this, don't you? I do. I really do. Franklin cuts it down to like 70 ish, but it's not enough. They fall short 12 11. It was pretty awesome. The atmosphere was great. I'm telling you, if you hadn't had a chance, here's what I love about this. We were talking about this off the air. This wasn't the nacho, <laughs> the nacho cheese fries crowd. These were guy athletes who were out there getting it done. They were cheering. Uh, uh, Drew Whalen, who was the baseball and bowling Wilco finalist last year. That's pretty That's strong. quite a combo. He was giving a little pep talk before. It was the real deal, man. It was the real deal. Uh, well, I know. Yeah, man. I bet you could. It was exciting. Now that you're um, – District-wide athletic director, you have to behave a little different than you did when you were a coach. But like, I was, I loved it. Did it take? And I, I wouldn't be surprised if you did. But I could see you. You know, did you did, did you fist pump? And well, there, if not, you wanted to. Well, there you? was one time when I was behind. I think it was uh, uh, maybe it was uh, Wyatt Seagal. He finished eleventh, by the way, in the individual. I was, by, and I could see it was going to be a strike. I think I went with the early. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. For those that don't know, back when <laughs> Coach used to coach, I was at a game, and uh, what, what was my man's name? Jordan Bruce was in the corner. <laughs> right? His first name is Jordan, right? Let's make this short. Come on. We gotta, we gotta, <laughs> and the, I don't even know if the ball – y'all were thumping somebody who will – we don't do crime on crime here, so I'll, the opponent will remain nameless. Name the school. It was probably It was been. bad. <laughs> The ball has not even come out. It maybe just came off that middle finger. Coach is in the on the sideline in the corner, starts walking down the sideline. Three. Well, it was awesome. Not my finest moment, but hey, hey, listen, let's let's do because I want to talk about this. Coach Logan's done this. What I loved about the whole situation, you, you, you could. It's what I love about athletics. Yep. People who were sort of from different. You can tell they're coming from different places. You had the guys who they just bowl. You had guys, and Coach Logan's done a good job of this, in their boys' program. They have six either baseball That's awesome. or football That's awesome, athletes, man. which is totally great. Uh, Drew Whalen, who's one of those baseball players, Carson Cochran, another. Uh, their seniors, Braden Didier, who was a Wilco finalist and winner last year, Nate Dorson. Jacob Aby, another baseball player. I want to give a shout out to them. Uh, Houston Folks, by the way, a sophomore, finishes in the top six in the individual tournament. That happened earlier in the week. Wyatt Stegall, a junior, finished 11th. And then Carson Cochran, who we mentioned was a senior, finished 22nd. So he's doing it right. Take notice the rest of the district. It, I'm, I'm telling you, it's putting pressure on these other schools. Oh, there's no doubt about it. That's awesome. And, and why is that important, what you were talking about, about the – Different walks. I, I love it, too. I think you're exactly right. That's one of the things that's down the road that I'm going to like about lacrosse. Uh, it's the thing I loved about, more than anything else, flag football with the girls. Well, you know, some of these schools are pretty big, right? And, and I, I, you know, um, a, a bowling-only guy and, say, Drew Whalen, they might not ever have any contact together, but they do because of bowling. You know what I'm saying? And they got to know each other, and they competed with together each other, competed f with each other, and built relationships, and that's what it's all about, man. So, yeah, I think it's awesome. Arts and athletics, nothing like to it. me is where that real. It can happen in your classrooms, but let's face it, it doesn't a lot. That's right. But when you get on, that's the beauty of it. It doesn't matter what I look like. It doesn't matter where I'm from. It doesn't matter my family's income. If you can play. You get out on that field, or in That's this right. case, in the lanes. On the lane, I love <laughs> it. I love it. Hey, yeah, I did but I do take exception to the nacho cheese fries <laughs> because the Tuscum Lane nachos is next level. It ought to be on Coach Wild's uh, meet and three tour, but 
I get what you're saying. That's fantastic. I just don't want to be like licking that off my fingers as I get up to bowl my next frame. What you're telling me is if this was golf, we weren't at the Skyview Country Club. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Absolutely hey, not. Hey, uh, we're not in the excuse-making business, but what I gathered from this is, it's not the excuse-making business. If Franklin and Dobbins Bennett were to play again, it'd be a different outcome. It would. Is the, is the, it it, it would, but it was, it was... It was, it was just exciting is all yeah. I can say about it. Uh, on the girls' side individual, I uh, want to recognize Brentwood Samantha Daly, who was a Wilco finalist last year. Uh, she and uh, Nolensville Sidney Osborne both qualified for the state tournament. Hey, I don't want to leave bowling without talking about this. Unified bowling. You and I love the unified sport. So what happens is you've got uh, uh, special needs students, in this case Brian Fisher, Evan Hook, Aiden King, and then they have partners, uh, some of which, in fact, all of them were on the Franklin Boys or Girls team. Riley Everhart, Ashley Cernovitz, Parker Lewis, Houston Falks, Carson Cochran. Third straight unified bowling championship for That's Franklin awesome. and Coach Kathy and his group. Hey, they won in 20. 21 was a COVID year. They went in 22. They went in 23. In the final, they beat uh, a school you mentioned before, Maryville. 281 to 278. That is fantastic. Love it for the unified team. Congratulations and, and, and credit where credit is due. Uh, I don't know why, but but it's just like Franklin. I mean, just like Bowling. For whatever reason, Franklin has has was was in on this early and really kind of been leading the charge. And it's the same thing with, with the unified sports. What I can see is one main um, thing they've got in common is Coach Kathy. But, no question. But Franklin's leading the way in the unified track, and they are it when it comes to unified bowling. So I think that's where the credit goes, or a lot of it. But I, I would think Coach Kathy gets a huge, and, huge fist bump. For and that. he's the wrestling head coach. That's yeah, taking yeah. some time. Yeah. But he's into it, and I think it's great. Uh, something else, and you would mentioned this before, big news this past week, TSSAA has officially adopted and sanctioned uh, lacrosse, it'll start in the 24-25 year. I'm excited about it. Listen, if we have young people who are interested in playing a sport, then I'm for it as the district AD. Now, the thing I was excited about is we did bump it to 24-25 because budgets and those kind of things. I know you and I had some conversations about that, and I appreciate uh, you providing the needed information for us. But when you start looking at what it costs to field a team, once we buy the uniforms and the equipments and the shoulder pads and uh, the helmets and uh, the balls and the goals and all these things you have to buy, uh, that becomes fairly expensive. So uh, since we're sort of in the middle of budget season, it's nice that we've got another year that we can get prepared for it. Correct. And for those that were, uh, I think they would find it interesting, um, here, here's what you can expect. It, it will be, this because Wilco schools are going to the participation is going to be above or way above um, average, right? I mean, we're, we're going to uh, have a lot of participation. It, it's going to become the second largest budget, right, uh, in, in, in each one of the schools. And when you look at it, you're going to have a boys and a girls team. It, it's going to be up there with football budget-wise. Hey, and uh – for those of you that might be involved in our club teams right now, uh, we will be wearing Adidas uniforms. And listen, I've done a little research on this. They look pretty good. Oh, yeah. They can do it up. It's going to be uh, – uh, most of them already are. But, uh, yeah, I, when you look at everything that the boys got to buy. Would you agree that the uniform for lacrosse is pretty cool? They are cool. I mean, it's – and, and, and it's something they got in on early, right? Uh -huh. Like, like, and it's pr they're pretty much always sublimated, so you can do whatever you want to with it, and the colors pop. But yeah, we're not into like maybe Notre Dame, but you know, we're not into just. You would have loved it. We're, we're we're not buying a white jersey with a one color number on the front. No, right? and the number's not coming off. No, they're not coming off. We're jazzing them up. I can already see the Ravenwood Raptor head like wrapping around. It's gonna be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It, yes, and, and Adidas got in on. They did. Uh, no surprise there, but 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 they got in on lacrosse. They took an interest and, and put an emphasis on lacrosse very early on. 
And we're glad they did. Yep. Let's talk a little. Uh, that, that'll be another one. It'll just be a matter of time before we start racking up gold trophies and that. Uh, I'm going to say we're going to win one in 24, 25. <laughs> I think so, too. Maybe two. <laughs> and probably have our own teams playing one another in the final. That's right. So that'll let be another thing that's exciting. That's right. Let's talk some wrestling, yep. Tate. want to congratulate yep. uh, Brentwood. Uh, they win the District 13 uh, regular season championship. Summit wins District 14. Fairview, no surprise there, won their district page. If they defeat Spring Hill in a duel, then they'll they'll wrap up theirs. Uh, now, listen, I was talking uh, to Coach Derek, kind of confirming some of these things. Listen, he likes his squad. He mentioned that they had a 48-24 win over Page. Page really good, too. Oh, yeah. And that he's got 12 seniors, and right now they're pretty healthy, and he likes the depth. Well, then, I, I mean, ready, he's I'm saying, ready. I'm not jumping on. I'm staying on. Yeah, that's right. You never got off. Never got off the bandwagon. You, I'm, just, I'm, you just went around for a little while. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yes, and he's not one to he, he's not one to say that unless he feels really good about him. So read into that what you should what you want. What you should read into that is they he thinks they they got a chance to get another one. Uh, and I and I think you know we've been very. Uh, we, we've made sure to talk about the job that Coach Derrick's done at Fairview because he's done a great job. Great job. I, and I, I think uh, District 13 champs, Coach Damon Smith, I think he's done an unbelievable job. He's been building it. When he took over, I don't even think Brentwood was filling out a full roster some some matches, right, because they had gaps. He's built that thing up, uh, like all of our guys have that have, that have been successful. But, uh, you know, they were kind of it for a long time in wrestling in this county. Kind of, you know, them and Franklin then kind of uh, fell back a little bit, but he's really built that thing up. He thinks he's got three, four guys that have a legitimate chance at a state championship. And, Fra and Franklin always wants us to mention, hey, don't forget we won a state title back in the day. Uh, more than one, yeah. <laughs> and Coach Kathy's got them. Coach Thomas has started it, but he started the rebuild, and then Coach Kathy's done a great job of it. So now – the fun thing is, is the district champs in 13 are Brentwood, Summit in 14. I don't think Brentwood and Summit have gone head-to-head -head yet. No, they haven't this year. So Summit takes on Franklin, Brentwood, Nolensville. Uh, but I'm going to tell you. Getting past Nolensville is no easy feat. Now, which I do want to mention. You and I were talking about this. So I rolled out to Summit last week. Looking forward to, uh, I think in the state rankings, it was Summit ranked fifth, Nolensville 10th. It's going to be at Nolensville. They've got this great duel. There's good atmosphere. Nolensville jumps out 9-0, and I look up, and it's 42-9. <laughs> Summit. Yeah. Uh, it's pin. It's pin. It's decision. Decision. Pin. Pin. And then final, final score, 66-9. Are you going to tell? I think, I think was fine. Yeah. Well, yes. Because uh, they fought, once once Summit had won, uh, Nolensville forfeited out the rest of Correct. it. Correct. What does that mean? It means Summit won the match no matter what. Okay. That's when they started doing that. But it, I don't think it would have been 60. I think some of those forfeits they would have won. But still, so, hey, man. They would have, but it was... It was heading that way. <laughs> it was heading that way. And it made me realize, number one, no one's was great. But some, it's just, they're just ahead right now. They are. Uh, I, there's things you think and things you know. And, and this is what Coach, uh, that's what Coach Miller got on early on. Because, hey, man, he's got the blueprint, right? Like, like one of them, I love it. It's, it's from Last Chance You. I'm not going to get into it. But, hey, man. <laughs> I know what good looks like. I can't tell you why this isn't good, but this isn't good, right? You can, Coach Miller knows what good looks like. Well, and listen, I give credit, too, all the way down to the middle school level over there at Spring Station, the job that Coach Hedges does. Yes. Wrestling is one of those sports. Here's what the wrestling folks have told me. If you wait till you're a freshman in high school, the gumption, I would call it, to get out there and go, okay, I'm taking on this guy one-on-one, -on -one, and I've never really done this. You need to get that going at younger ages. And the school, not that you can't do it, you can. Well, but you, better the schools, be, you better be a heck of an athlete. The schools that do it, and some it's one of them, through Spring Station and some of the other stuff they're doing, a lot of our teams are doing that. Right. But, uh, you know, I can remember being at Beach, and 
I didn't know a lot about it, but I just knew this. Uh, Jeff Roberts, who did a great job yeah. there at Beach, they had you know, all these little kids starting to show up and go into this room, and I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I know they're getting ready to be good, and they really were. 100%. Well, that's what – Coach Miller got the club started early on. If you don't have club wrestling feeding that middle school program and in that high school program, you're not beating those guys come state tournament time. And don't get us – don't confuse this. We're not talking about – you do club and nothing else. No. You're still playing other sports. and It's exactly what you just said. The first time you step on a mat doesn't mean when you walk into high school. <laughs> Unless you're – now, there's there's athletes that can pull it off, but that means you were probably really good at something else too. Hey, listen, I know this is your first match and we're excited, <laughs> but uh, your opponent's uh, Skylar Coffee. Have fun with that. <laughs> uh, I, I've got a ham, hamstring pull that I just forgot. <laughs> Listen, I'll never forget. Or just don't make weight. The guy doing a backflip at the heavyweight division, and I was on the floor level. Maybe the most impressive thing I've seen. That guy. That guy could have been good at anything. Unbelievable. All right, Tate, let's talk a little hoops. We're going to finish up talking hoops. A uh, little different setups. I knew we had some other things to talk yeah. about that we need to take care of. Uh, but with basketball, we'll t- start off with the girls. WCTV game of the week. Summit gets a 52 45 win over Ravenwood. Hey, l- don't look now, but Nolensville, 3 and 0. You've been the on league. this now for a while. I've been on it a while. 43 35 over previously unbeaten Columbia. Brentwood, 44 46 loss at Hillsboro. Independence with a 46 27 win over Franklin. Coach Hill doing a great job there at Independence, Savannah C in that particular game with 12 points. So take, let's take a look at that, those district standings. If you look at the girls' basketball district, so in 11-4A, you've got Hillsborough undefeated at 3-0, Brentwood 3-1, uh, Franklin, Overton both 1-2, Centennial 0-3. So still a lot to play for. You get in the top three, you obviously advance. Uh, girls 12-4A, Columbia Central 2-1, Indy 2-1, Summit 1-2, Ravenwood 0-4. Those teams are at the bottom right now. Most thought they would be at the top. Still a lot to play for. And Nolensville 3-0. Great job what Coach Ladd's doing. And he's got a young squad too. Always. Hey, and I think the out of all those results you talk about, I know we didn't want to lose. I think the Brentwood 44-46 to loss to Hillsborough, I think that does them a lot of good come tournament time. I think it does too. And we had mentioned, uh, you know, Summit, again, thinking about the parity in the region, Summit is 1-2 and two in their district, but they had a running clock against Brentwood. Maybe the best girls' performance I've seen since, seen since I've been here, moving the ball and doing what they need to do. So let's not – there's a lot of good teams. A lot of good teams, yeah. Brentwood and Summit both included. Oh, yeah. Br- Br- Brentwood, you know, Hillsboroughs, they're just not. Both of those teams. They're not going to let you go out and make 12, 13 threes. So, now they know that. They'll play them differently the next time. And I think I, I do. I think you don't want an L, but I think that one's beneficial going into the tournament. Well, and keep this in mind, too. And this always happens with younger teams. They're going through, I mean, a little bit of a lull. They've lost a couple of games lately after winning like 13 in a row. Right. So let's don't panic, Brentwood. <laughs> right, right. But when you're young, this happens. You know, you, you're looking at, and I know they play summer league and do all that kind of stuff, but when you've got people out there competing who last year played like 11 middle school games, and now all of a sudden they're in a 30-something game schedule against bigger, tougher kind of bodies, it makes a difference. Make so a they're difference. sort of in that period right now, but they'll – They'll be ready when it's tournament time. Let's talk a little bit about the boys' side. So the WCTV game of the week, uh, Ravenwood with a 66-46 win at Summit. Uh, Nolensville gets their first district win. Coach Kadice doing a great job, 56-50 over Columbia, uh, Hillsborough over Brentwood, and then one that really surprised me. I know this is one that you talked about on your show this past weekend. A non-district game, but Franklin hosting Independence, my TV 30 game, 60 60- Three to forty after Franklin had defeated Independence in Florida, 77, 75, or whatever it was in so overtime. Was. Yeah. What a performance by Coach Wilkins and his team. What a performance. Um tale of two halves, right? It was 30 to 29 at halftime. Uh I asked Coach Wilkins, you ever been a part of something like this? He said, No. But uh 
they come out and go 20, they go on a 22 and one run in the second half. Against the team that can really score. <laughs> well, they scored 77 on them the last time. So, um, yeah, man, that, that's crazy. So, you know, uh, one, what an unbelievable performance by, by Independence. But that, that was the thing I took from that. In that 22-1, I'm more impressed with the one than I am the 22 because Franklin is a team, uh, and Coach Wilkins said, he said they're one of the best shooting teams you'll find anywhere they are. in the state, not just in the district. So for them to be able to hold them to one point, I don't think that would happen again the next time if they were to see each other again. But that, that's an incredible defensive performance. And, uh, and, and then, you know, this, this is what would scare me. Uh, Tylen Lewis, you know, he's a guy who can score 19 points a game. That's just not what the Independence Eagles need him to do night in and night out. But you have him scoring 19 and Jet scoring 20, that's, that's not going to be good for, the, for whoever the opponent is at any point. Something I needed to mention. We talked about the WCTV game of the week. Let's take a look at the WCTV play of the week. Hallett, great pass. And Rocco Lamuno with the finish. Well, typical Patrick Whitlock, Ravenwood team, great ball movement. A guy we've been hearing a lot from this year, Rocco Lamuno. Great He's, name. Great. A <laughs> great name. Great <laughs> hair. Was a great Brentwood back then. It was called Brentwood Civitan. Was a great Brentwood Civitan ball baseball player back in the day. Now, let me guess. Was he like on your squad? No, or? no. <laughs> but we faced him. I didn't like facing him because he was good. <laughs> maybe or maybe not had some bad thoughts about him, you know, <laughs> in, 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 during a game, but I've always really liked him. And, and, and that leads to something I wanted to ask you about. I know we this will be quick. Uh, I know we've caught some heat through the years. No. Uh, Miss, Miss, my good friend Mrs. Gaynor is one oh. of them. Krista Gaynor, good friend. Glad she's watching. She got after me uh, a few years ago <laughs> because – I did not give uh, – I thought that the Raptors, the boys' team, would get upset pretty early in the tournament. Uh, come to find out, I, I guess I gave them a little motivation. Uh, that's who I think is going to – they're going to pick somebody. Yeah. Their record doesn't look like it, but they are a matchup problem for a lot of people. They are. And they're, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna cause somebody an early exit. 45-44. Lost to Indy right. on Tuesday night before Indy takes care of Franklin. So, yeah, that and, – and two wins over Franklin. Two wins over Franklin. That's right. Which is – Back earlier, too, like it wasn't like, you know, the, the Franklin team looks a little different. One of those, maybe both of those was before that. Well, back when Franklin had two losses. Right. Both to Ravenwood. There you go. Uh, real quickly, Tate wanted to mention with the district standings, too, uh, Centennial – Sitting atop 11 4A undefeated. Same can be said about Independence in 12 4A. Looking forward to that game this week. Yes. Centennial Hillsboro. Hillsboro's also undefeated on the boys' side. Uh, that one's at Hillsboro. Coach Moore likes his team. He should. He should. They're, they're playing well. For a too. couple of reasons. One, uh, they're good. Two, these are his kind of, this is what he's been building. Towards. Likes it. These are his kind of guys. That's not good when he when he has his good good for him, but bad for that's others. Right, that's right. I like this team a lot. I did want to mention too, uh, Paige and uh, Fairview, the Paige girls two and two in their league. The boys undefeated at four and zero, oh, uh, both with wins over Tullahoma last week. The girls forty eight forty, boys forty six thirty four, and then Fairview's boys rolling right along, four and zero oh in league play, sixty three fifty six win over Sycamore. Uh, girls sitting at one and three, they dropped their game to Sycamore. Listen, Coach McCoy and that team, they are not the hunter when it comes to that district. They are the hunted. They've won a lot of district tournaments. I know he's got other plans for his team. They're looking to try to make it to that state tournament. But uh, when they play those district games, th those scores may seem close. It's because, believe me, when these teams match up against Fairview, it's sort of like their little district Super Bowl. Big time. Yeah, I, 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 and he, he's been building towards this. Here it is. I, I, th I think 
This, Here it is. This st state tournament team. Here it is. Looking forward to seeing what the postseason looks like. Is Murphy Center ready for PMS 103? It'd be great. It would be <laughs> actually great. Now they get that gray, that it's darker, awesome. or whatever color that is in there. It'd look really good in there. Oh, big time. Uh, some games this week I wanted to mention, Tate, as we're closing out here. Battle of the Woods. Wood Woods takes place this week at Ravenwood. We got the border battle this time. Indy travels to Summit. Uh, we mentioned Centennial Hillsboro and then a couple big district games, Fairview and Harpeth, Page and Lawrence County on the uh, boys and girls side for the Patriots. Oh, some good games right there. Some good games. Plenty of options. Wrestling, postseason, uh, uh, basketball getting towards postseason, and only a couple weeks out. For before spring, teams can get out on the field and our had our flag football meeting. Excited about that getting started. That'll be cranked up here soon as well. Uh, Ravenwood and Coach Hester, the hunted. Definitely the hunted. I they like got, the they shirts. got some big shoes to fill. I, listen, I know I wore it at game day, but I like that shirt, that championship shirt. I don't, I don't usually wear a school's gear, but had to that night. I like it. <laughs> hey, man. They were the champs. They were the champs. Tate, as always, great to see you. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, man. See you next, next week. Thank you for joining us for Sports Connection. We'll see you next time.